Okay, so someone asked me, what do you think about black frame insertion on this 240 hertz OLED monitors that we have today? And you know that I love black frame insertion and I guarantee you, <laughs> this is the channel with more videos about black frame insertion and motion clarity on YouTube, <laughs> okay? I am just fascinated with motion clarity and the whole idea, but here is the problem. I am going to use this picture from Monitors Unbox. This is one of my favorite YouTube channel and I'm gonna have a link in the description of this video, of course. And this is the review of the LG 27GR95QE, <laughs> okay? So here you can see the brightness that the display has in different window sizes because you know with this OLED displays we have ABL limitations okay why a combination between power restrictions and burning prevention okay but it's just it is what it is and it's not going away anytime soon so because ABL this is the brightness we can get full screen okay 134 nits so here is the problem. If you just insert a black frame, let's say the monitor is 240 hertz, you get 120 FPS, and the monitor is actually at 240, and it is just inserting a black frame in between those 120 FPS. You're going to cut the brightness in half, okay? Based on the tailbot plateaus low so what would be the full screen brightness of that monitor half so 134 divided by two okay that's not enough brightness that's very dim okay of course we can still use it and i would like to have that option but what they have to do is they need to implement pulse width modulation pwm so you can get more brightness and better motion clarity. So for example, if we can see here, on a 10% window, this monitor can do 664 nits. On a 25% window, this monitor can do 413 nits. So for example, I calculated here real quick, 413 nits divided by four, that's 103, okay? So you can get 103 nits full screen if the display is able to do PWN on a 25% window. So the way it works is that the display is going to draw the image left to right, top to bottom, and after you see 25% of the screen, 25% of the frame, you're going to scroll that down and the rest is black. Scroll that down and the rest is black. And that is going to give you a 4X motion clarity improvement. Okay, so that's great. Or even if the display can do 50%, which is going to just improve the motion clarity in 2X, I calculated here, 50% is 230. So just divide that by two that would be 115 nits, okay? So that would be a little bit brighter, a full screen brightness. So we need more than 100 nits full screen to just, to get a good picture quality, okay? To get an SDR picture quality. And not only that, these companies need to do a gamma adjustment. So when you use the feature, the picture looks good. Because the problem with black frame insertion and with this, all these motion blur reduction techniques is that people don't like, one, the brightness going down, and two, the picture quality becoming crap, okay? So these companies need to understand that in order to sell this feature to people, the picture quality needs to be good. <laughs> so you need to start with that. You need to make sure that when you turn on that feature to improve the motion clarity, the picture quality does, doesn't suffer, okay? 
That is so important. That's what I've been trying to do here all the time. I've been trying to get a good picture quality when using black frame insertion. Okay, and that's what these companies need to understand. They need to work hard to improve the motion clarity, but they have to also make sure that it looks good. Okay, so that's my short answer. So I would still like to have that option, but here's the problem. If the monitor is 240 hertz and it cannot go beyond that, it cannot do PWM at 480 or beyond, the maximum, mo so the minimum motion blur possible on that monitor is going to be four milliseconds of persistence equal to four pixels of motion blur when moving at 1000 pixels per second. That's the Blur Buster's Law. And the Blur Buster's Law tells you the minimum motion blur possible by any display technology. And that's before introducing other limitations such as gray to gray. Okay? So that monitor can give you 4 milliseconds of persistence. If you can get 240 FPS, it can give you 4 milliseconds of persistence if you can get 120 FPS with black frame insertion, but cut, cutting the brightness in half. And it can still give you 4 milliseconds of persistence if you can get 60 FPS, but then you're going to reduce the brightness in 4x, okay? 4x. So imagine full screen is 134, and then you cut the brightness in 4x. That's just too dim. Okay, this is not gonna work well unless they decide to release more brightness because black from insertion is going to make the monitor less likely to burn in. Okay, you're reducing the risk of burning. Okay, so if they release more brightness, then this is this is gonna change. This would definitely change if they decide to release more brightness. So now they can also do, and I was reading. Uh, a potential monitor that might come out. I do not want to give this company free uh, promotion because some of some of my people, some of my subscriber, uh, actually his name on YouTube is the display guy or the display talk, something like that. I forgot. He mentioned that this company doesn't have a good track record. And yeah, I do not want to give free promotion to this company, but I already reached out to them. Uh, I was reading their product page and they might have black frame insertion on one of these 240 hertz OLED displays. But again, I'm explaining you the limitations. They are not going to have PWM. And on their product page, they were saying that they are also thinking on implementing it at 80 FPS. So if you multiply it, 8 by 3 you get 240 80 by 3 you get 240 so basically in that way you reduce the brightness to 33 percent okay so you reduce the persistence to 33 percent so you are basically increasing the motion clarity in 3x okay so uh, that would be very nice actually i would be i think that's a very good if it's bright enough, that would be very good because 80 FPS makes a lot of sense. You can get 80 FPS in most games today. And that, that's a very, very good target. You get 80 FPS, 4 milliseconds of persistence. That's a great idea. But again, the problem is the brightness. Black frame insertion for these OLED displays is a problem. The display is not bright enough. What really works is PWM to adjust the size, the window size, okay? So for example, the LG G3 can do 1400 nits on a 10% window size, okay? So if you can do 1400 nits on a 10% window size and you can do, that means that full screen would be 140 nits. Because 10% of 1400 is 140 nits. So that's perfect for SDR. So basically that G3 could have a persistence of 
milliseconds and you might wonder well but the problem is 120 fps and the tv is strobing with such a small window size that is going to flicker a lot not necessarily the flickering the way we perceive the flickering is not linear it doesn't work linearly i'm going to do a separate video but, uh, with that explanation uh, you know, I've been communicating with the Blurbusters chief, and but yeah, I have to be very careful when I say anything from our communication because I do not want to make any mistakes, and I do not want to quote anything that he tells me. But yeah, I am fortunate enough to ask him some questions, and he's kind enough to bless this channel with his infinite motion clarity wisdom. Okay, so I'm gonna do a separate video about that flickering specifically. What's the, the threshold for flickering and how the flickering um, works basically? If, if it when it becomes annoying and and yeah, all of that. So yeah, that's my take on it. It is a great idea to improve the motion clarity, but they have to work on it. Okay, it's not something that okay, it's 240 hertz. Let's just insert the black frame. Let's not have any picture quality adjustments and it's not gonna work because people are going to turn off that turn on that feature the picture looks too dark and then the settings are probably locked so you cannot even tweak the settings like you can do on these TVs to get the perfect uh, picture quality that's not gonna work nobody's going to like that nobody's going to use that <laughs> so it doesn't make any sense so yeah that's my take. Let me know uh, your thoughts and opinions and if you have any questions.